Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a Digital Rebar Kubernetes OpenStack Helm uh, demo. Uh, this is super exciting um, because we've been um, watching engaged in this, in this uh, OpenStack on Kubernetes effort for quite a while. Uh, if you've been watching uh, stuff I'm doing, I actually have a joint Kubernetes OpenStack talk series I've been doing. Did this at the Barcelona Summit at, in the Valley, um, sort of talking about the challenges about uh, how to put these things together in a very practical way, um, pitfalls and ways to do it. And uh, we saw this work coming up out of the AT&T ComDev group uh, with Brandon and Alan. Um, and we were super excited because they were using Kubernetes Helm, which is the, the native way to work with Kubernetes, uh, so that you could take OpenStack and run it in, in a really predictable way. Uh, and the work is, is frankly progressed really, really well uh, to the point where I'm going to show you OpenStack deployed on Kubernetes. Um, I have a local system. You can see it actually aired out because I ran out of disk space. Um, and then on Packet Host, which is a remote deployment, um, bare metal as a service. And I'll, I'll walk you through that guide. I'll show you how the installs work a little bit. Um, and this is early, but totally usable. So you can take our stuff and you can do a one-click Kubernetes on OpenStack deployment. Um, stacked on top of digital rebar and, and Kubernetes cargo and then using these Helm playbook, uh, these Helm charts um, and make it all go. So very powerful. We think this is the way that we're, people are going to be consuming OpenStack in the coming years. Um, it's just very manageable. It's a really intelligent way to, to do it. Um, that said, don't tear down your production deployment yet. Um, I want to show you this because we're looking for people who want to play. Um, Pete at Port Direct has been doing some really interesting Neutron work that we're super excited about also. I have a blog post coming out. Uh, actually, this is going to be embedded in it, so hopefully you're reading the blog post and watching the video. Uh, super cool. So let me show you a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, the two deployments here I deployed uh, from Digital Rebar. There's tons of videos showing you how to get to this point, but basically um, an OpenStack deployment. Um, I can per either choose existing nodes, um, from my system, so boot, pixie, discovery, digital rebar is right the leader. Uh, it's my opinion, but you can verify it if you want. Uh, we're really good at doing bare metal provisioning and infrastructure, but we're hybrid, so you can do cloud or bare metal, uh, super fast test cycles. So if I'm using existing nodes, I can do an install there. Ubuntu 16.04 is the preference. Or I can use a cloud provider, in this case, Packet, uh, bare metal nodes, so it's a really nice fit for what we're trying to do. Um, and put in some, this is the Kubernetes deployment uh, credentials, and then literally just go through and, and set up my environment. So uh, in this case, this would be a real standard environment. Um, I'm not going to complete this, but basically the idea here is, um, whoa, set up a big default environment. Um, that I can come in and set control and workers. I could set multiple controls and multiple workers if I want. Um, since it's OpenStack and Kubernetes, I need OpenStack and Kubernetes. Um, in this case, I'm putting the control planes together, but you could intermix them if you wanted. Um, that's perfectly cool in the way this stuff works. Um, and if I say next, what it's going to do is generate um, a JSON file. This JSON file is just a deployment uh, setup guide. It's pretty straightforward. It's got attributes that I want. It's got the name of the deployment, where I'm going to get it from, that I'm going to use Ubuntu, and then it's going to say build build nodes. Uh, and I'll show you. I, I ran this earlier, so uh, we don't have to wait. But if I hit next, it'll go build a new OpenStack cluster for me, side by side with the, the other one. So digital rebar, hybrid, multi-deployment infrastructure. So I can run multiple deployments on different clouds if I wanted at the same time, super handy if you're doing CI/CD test or you're doing rapid dev cycles. You could actually stage a Kubernetes cluster for a OpenStack deployment and then add OpenStack to it after the fact. Uh, Greg Althaus, our CTO, already did one of those um, videos, so that's easy to find too. Um, and you don't have to just do it through the UI. If you were doing CI/CD, um, if I click here, this is actually posting to this API endpoint. Um, so I could just post it to our API, or I could go rebar, uh, deployments, um, create, and then put the JSON here, and it would create that deployment. Um, 
which is exactly what would happen if I wanted a CI CD. I just post it and then I can actually tell rebar to monitor um, that deployment until it's all good. So super easy to use by, you know, visually with the UI or uh, back end with APIs and CLIs. Um, we really, really, it's important to us to have, right, we're operators at heart. So if you just like command line or you want to write a bash script, that shouldn't, the, the product shouldn't get in your way for that. Anyway, so I've already done this, so we don't have to wait. So I've got two deployments here. I've got my one, my local one running on three local nodes. Um, I've got my packet one going. Since the packet's all green, I'll show you that one first. Um, with that, and so you'll see it, it's really important to us, this transparency and what's where. In this case, you can see this packet first node is the, the controller node. It has all these extra functions on it like Helm, Kubernetes add-ons, the dashboard, um, the deployment stuff for OpenStack. Um, and this is, is pretty straightforward work. If you look at what um, the digital rebar stuff is, um, sorry, digital rebar, it's not there, that's digital rebar. These are just added in in workloads. Kubernetes, uh, this is our Kubernetes stuff using cargo. This is OpenStack. OpenStack is very straightforward. It's just these two roles. Um, base just sets Helm up and then deploy is one script that's getting run in the system. The nice thing is all the inputs are being injected for you and then it just runs a whole bunch of Helm charts. Um, the nice thing is it does it with the information you need. So you don't have to think a lot about how this goes. Um, you just click run, it's going to inject it. But if you want to mess with it, it's just a script, right? You can easily do that and come in and tweak it. I'll show you what happened in the one that I'm doing, the other one that failed. So you can you can see exactly where this goes. But, you know, no magic, just basic stuff, but connected together in a very useful way. Uh, so, I come back over to my actual site. That's the API outputs. Pick this server. This server is Here's the address for it. Uh, I can actually just click here. It's going to open it. And this is going to give me Kubernetes API. Not the way most people consume Kubernetes. I can go into the UI for Kubernetes. This brings up the dashboard. And this is the base for Kubernetes. So it's our default net checker type stuff. Uh, one of the things that this deployment does that's super exciting uh, and generically reusable is Ceph. Uh, there's stateful sets and persistence, so you can actually store like a database. In Kubernetes, uh, you need a Ceph cluster or a storage cluster to do that. We automatically set up a Ceph cluster in its own namespace, and so it built all that, and you can see all of those pieces running. Um, does correct Ceph, and then that gets joined into the OpenStack pod. And then this is the OpenStack pod, so lots of green check light, check boxes um, as it actually came in and then integrated into the Ceph. So Kubernetes used the Ceph cluster for stateful sets. Uh, if I look at stateful sets, you can see I have a MariaDB, so an actual database cluster backended by Ceph. There's so much here. It's super cool. Um, and it, th this project's only like two and a half months old, so we've made a ton of project progress. Um, the project has done its community effort ton of progress already through here and we're just sort of pulling it all together and making it you know gluing it together which is what digital rebar's purpose is to do is to automate this underlay stuff to make this stuff just scream right through so MariaDB is here um, as stateful sets if you look at all the deployments that we've got I want horizon um, remember these are all in containers and then the helm chart tells the container where to provision based on tags where to, uh, how to come up, how to hook things together, all this cool operational stuff that Kubernetes does really well that we can take advantage of. If I look in Horizon here, I'm going to get an IP address. So <laughs> deep in Horizon, I know which IP address it's running in the cluster. I need that for this next step in the demo. So um, what I'm going to do is I have a couple of things to do. First, I need to SSH because that cluster is actually behind. There, we, ha we haven't integrated in the external service proxies and things like that that you need, so I have to get to that machine. 147, uh, 75, 97, 89. 
So that'll get me onto the host, uh, the, the machine that's running the OpenStack host. And then I need to get onto, I need to forward uh, port 80 from dashboard. Right, we're talking about Horizon, good. Uh, so I need to take port 80 from that, that IP address in the Kubernetes cluster and port forward it to my, my desktop through SSH. Hopefully that doesn't make your head hurt too much. It's, it's pretty straightforward. So I've, I've got a private network running in, my, in the packet data center where Kubernetes is running. And Kuberne so all that OpenStack stuff is inside of the Kubernetes network domains. I'm forwarding that back to my laptop or my desktop here. So I'm going to SSH in. I'm all good. I'm on that machine. I can say Docker PS, and you're going to see a ton of containers. Woohoo! That's a ton of containers. Um, because all the Kubernetes containers, all the open containers, there's a lot of containers. Um, but the good news here now is I can come in. Uh, I'll leave that up for a second. Um, and I'm going to go in, and this is my OpenStack cluster. So I just, a, port 8011 is forwarded to that remote machine. I can come in and say, hey, look, let's, let's go in. And voila, here is my Kubernetes deployed OpenStack Horizon dashboard. And if I look in the hypervisors, it's going to show me the three machines that are part of that cluster. Uh, I ended up with 31 gigs of RAM. Uh, 200 gigs of storage based on the Ceph cluster that's back ending all this stuff. Um, we haven't installed any flavors or volumes. I think we're, there's some uh, AT&T ComDev code that uh, can actually do the next step and b build some of the cluster de definitions. So we'll pull that pull that in next so it, you automatically start with some actual stuff in there. Um, but the system's looking pretty good. Um, all the pieces and parts are in. Um, the Ceph volumes and storage. We haven't uploaded any volumes, um, but you know it's it's a functional OpenStack cluster um, working. It, that's about it. Um, but deployed one click through that wizard um, and run, and then I can I'll show you how to tear it down because end of this video I'm tearing things down. Um, for the cluster that I have that didn't come up. I actually, one of the things I'm, I'm really proud about for uh, digital rebar is that it fails in a transparent way. Because the thing I hate is when something breaks and you can't figure out why. So I know exactly where it broke. And I can scroll down here. And I can see all these Helm charts worked. Yay. This is just output from that script I showed you. Woohoo! Boy, it got really far. Um, before it failed. And. It finally got down to trying to bring up the cluster deployment and then there was a timeout connection timeout during a banner exchange so um, you can go in and figure out exactly where uh, the system just timed out trying to bring the, the services up likely just ran out of disk space to tell you the truth um, where my system just could have just gotten a little over overheated and decided it couldn't make it through this round uh, these are not indemnipotent yet uh, like I said, still plenty of places to add and do work, and all the Neutron Cinder or Neutron uh, Kubernetes networking integration stuff that PortDirect's been talking about. Um, Pete at PortDirect has been talking about still to come, um, but it doesn't feel that far off. It feels like we're making really solid progress. Um, and even so, with this failure, I can still come in. Um, that's running on uh, server 81 on my local machine and I could come in and look and say okay let's see what's going on with the OpenStack deployments um, and I could start troubleshooting what had happened. You'll notice there aren't as many so it, it clearly just didn't finish pulling all the containers down and getting things set up. Um, but wow you get all of the, the pieces. We're deploying um, log monitoring and, and there's, there's a ton of capability um, just in our Kubernetes deployment and it's just layered on top of it. So, wow, huge amounts of things to show you. Um, now that I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and, and use Rebar to, to tear down this um, packet deployment so my meter starts running. Uh, so I, take, I can take this deployment. When I'm done with it, I can just destroy it. Yes. Uh, that does not destroy the nodes. 
um, I need to just come in and destroy my nodes right here and boom and it will go out and delete them out of packet and stop stop packet from charging me money uh, for this demo sorry guys I love you but I'm not gonna charge not gonna pay you extra to leave a demo running um, if, if you're interested in packet uh, we, we love what packets doing packet.net uh, Racken 100 will get you a credit uh, to start running on their site and you can do this demo for free uh, for at least a couple hours using the, the credit that you can do for that. I, I highly recommend it. If you're interested in engaging with us, Racken.com, of course, uh, you can contact us there. Uh, Rebar.digital is the, the community side of this site, and we have Gitter uh, channels and Slack channels, and we're happy to help you and engage with this. And we're also, of course, active in the Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes Cargo uh, channel and the OpenStack channel and the cluster ops channel and uh openstack helm is where you'll find a lot of this activity um, i'm rob hirschfeld this is uh, digital rebar by rack n and i hope you found this demo exciting and interesting